Hi, I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching NME. We're down here at the beautiful, sunny, mad cool festival with Frank and Dean off of the Rattlesnakes. Hola. How you doing, lads? <laughs> Pretty good, yeah. All right. All things considered, I'm sitting in the sun. It was absolutely bucketing it down earlier, so I'm glad that's ended. He's soaking up the Spanish vibes, had some... I'm gone full Madrid, mate. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like I'm loving it. Do you have a different look for each country? Like, do you ever go French, whatever that means? Well, yeah, I've got a beret in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> No. Is, that, is that a bad thing to say? No, it's Can you say that? Like, like, that's the four of you in a beret. Like. I like. I mean, I look good in a beret. Like, I but I think basically, it. like, I just you just gotta go with the vibe. And like today, I woke up and it was pissing it down, and I was gutted. And then, um, and then the sun's come out, and I'm just like I've taken off all my clothes, and I'm just loving it. Like, I feel great. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Donde esta la fiesta? It's right here. Right here, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I am the fiesta. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your uh, first time, Mad Cool? You've been before? This is our first Mad Call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we play. We were talking about it. We played this tiny venue in Madrid, Sala Limon. Yeah. Uh, probably four, five years ago. And then mostly in Barcelona. So yeah, excited. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Our Spanish crowds different. They're a bit, they're a bit more mad for it. They love. They are, aren't they? Yeah. Like some of the shows we've had in Spain just blow our minds. Always, on, it's just wild. Amazing. Well, like, obviously you guys did the download pilot, which was very good of you to kind of test the waters and get back out there. But how does it feel now to finally be? back out there in earnest like going full full throttle we, we have zero memories of download pilot <laughs> honestly this is the i remember it's walking on stage and walking off stage it's just too so it's that it's yeah there's too much going on i think like my mind just like blanked out but now it's like um yeah we're like you said we're in full flow we're just loving it like life is good there's no complaints we're just cracking on it's, it's beautiful good. how have you found the world's reaction to sticky Everyone's been really good, man. They've like, I mean, they seem to be like loving the record. Like, it's definitely like what's happened live has been amazing. It's just like it's just developed into this beautiful thing, and it's like, yeah, it's. The, I guess I guess the idea behind the record was to make a live a live album, the yeah. album that should have been heard live. And when we play those songs, like we just we yeah, I think a nice a nice realization that we could get it right in the studio for the for the show. You know? So yeah, it's been good. You got some great guests on there, from rising stars to legends. Bobby Gillespie. Bo no, but Bobby was your favourite part, right? <laughs> Bobby's still the, that that moment where he recorded is still my favourite studio moment I've ever had. Yeah. Yeah. Just like I felt like I was just watching someone else's documentary of something I think is awesome. Left your body. I even started like like covertly filming it on my iPhone, which I think is just like not something I've ever done in my life. <laughs> to just go, you know what? I'm willing to break a little bit of social, social kind of whatever you're supposed to do when I just started filming it I was like I need this somewhere and I haven't even watched it because I can remember it vividly it was just a yeah. beautiful moment he, he he came to the studio just to listen to yeah. see what and we, we weren't even sure we were going to write anything together and we played him this song and he was like yeah I like it like what else you got and we played him some other stuff and he just said just get like I need, you got some paper and I just grabbed whatever he was lying around and gave him this paper and he just wrote these lyrics and he wrote some of the best lyrics I've, I've ever heard. I, love, I loved it and um, it was amazing. And he basically like, he, le he, he, re he put it all down in two takes and it was phenomenal. Yeah. And then he left and I just went and like grabbed these, these lyrics and turn them over and it was someone's record contract. Someone, <laughs> someone, someone's printed out record contract that they were signing in, in, in the studio we were in. For some reason that's so perfect. And now I've so got, perfect. yeah, and, I, and I've got them like framed at my house now. I love and it. they've never yeah. been signed since. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Fuck you know. But Bobby is a collaborator. I mean, does he, um, did he pass in any pearls of wisdom or does he just show up, be Bobby Gillespie, drop mic, leave? It would, I mean, he did drop mic, but there were plenty, he also dropped a lot of wisdom. Like along the way, like he, but he's one of the greatest of all time, of, of all time, and I like, yeah, he's amazing. And I think even his approach to the how, how we went about making it was just fascinating. Like it was, it was equal parts of non, -com like it was all art led. Basically, he would have at any point said, "Cool, like I'll come back," or just, "I'm not going to sing on this." If he didn't, there was no, there was like it was just if he was inspired. And I think that's why it was quite special when he said, "Actually, go and throw up Mike." And we didn't know if he was going to sing because he was like, let's see what happens. Yeah. Very, yeah, very, just beautiful to see someone who is only focusing on art. I don't think he cared, like, he just wanted to like the music. Whether we were the biggest artists or smallest artists, wouldn't have mattered to him. And I've seen him guest on artists that just started and then obviously legendary. So his whole, the whole thing of where it came from, from him, you learn a lot from that. Yeah. Where the hell did you go from here? Getting Jagger on the next record? 
Probably not. <laughs> Maybe not Jagger. <laughs> Maybe James Hetfield though. We keep bumping oh, into there. him, and he's a, he's a, yeah, he's a good lad. Chomping a big cigar, so, looking very he is. very Metallica. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's he's a, he's like king of rock and roll, isn't he? Like he's proper. Like he's just. I, I I watched him the other day, and he like forgive me, James, but he um I'm stood side of stage watching him from his little guitar world and. Uh, he, he come it's a massive guitar world like it's, it was out it, it was it was so sick it was so fucking sick I, I was trying to downplay it but it's, it was just, it was one of the best moments of my life I, like, I fucking love Metallica do you know what I mean I'm stood there and I'm watching him play and he um, and he comes over and he changes his guitar and he gives me a high five and he goes oh wait I've got something for you and he goes and he gets like a handful of this stuff and he comes he puts it in my hands it's like some plectrums and a All right. and like these little vocal zone pills and he goes have you I wonder where he was and going. he goes and he goes he goes you know what these are and they're just they're like throat sweets right and oh. he go and they're called vocal zones and they and he goes these are going to save your life right they're, they'll save your life they'll save your throat and I was like fucking oh wow thank you like wow. cheers mate and he, this is the middle of his fucking set playing yeah. to 6,000 people he's you know <laughs> and he's giving out yeah literally and he goes um he goes, do you know who, do you know who put me onto these? And I'm sitting there thinking, man, who, like, <laughs> some fucking legend? rock and roll legend. And he goes, Tom fucking Jones. And he put his guitar <laughs> right on and he went back to stage. And I was <laughs> just like, right. and I'm just there like, wow. Yeah, time. exactly. Wow. I was like, fucking, that was sick. And now you've, you've got to carry the, you got to keep the thread going now. Yeah, yeah. I've, I'm, I've got a subscription to Vocal Zone now. Those picks, and then we played a show the next day and I, I found it in my pocket. I was like, do I play the show with it? And everyone around was like, of course you do. Yeah. Yeah. Went in the crowd on that show. When I came back, got. Oh, man. Gone. But then I figured, I didn't know this in the moment, but before I went in the crowd, I put it in my in the condom pocket, played with another one. So like, I managed <laughs> to protect the pick at all costs. And I found it before I washed my jeans. Nice. Was it like the pick of destiny? Could you feel James Hetfield like surging yeah. through you? Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was about 10 times as good at guitar as soon as I picked it. He was it. channeling some, some Hetfield that day. It was great. So I'm going to write all the riffs for our new record on. <laughs> Just that pick. Have you been thinking about the next record or are you still in Sticky World? That's no, weird no, to no. say, isn't it? No, we are completely <laughs> unstuck. Uh, <laughs> We have been, yeah, we've already been working on it. We've been writing a lot, actually. Um, I don't really know, like, where it's going yet, but we're going to, like, yeah. We're just, like, it's nice to, after a record, just be free completely and just crack on. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, I reckon, what, September, October time, we're going to dig in proper. Yeah, yeah. we've got, we got a bunch coming. It's just trying to, yeah, you, you, you just sort of make loads, and then it seems to, something cohesive seems to appear, and then... In that moment, we seem to get insanely productive, and it's like <laughs> it's like we've just seen a glimmer of a record. It's like quick, get it before it's gone. But before that, it's quite like I think that's just our process, isn't it? It's quite like we make some songs, we don't overthink it, keep making different vibes and sounds, see what happens. Now, to be fair, you've got quite a lot on your on your plate at the moment because you've just launched Halves. Yes. Which I've got. Right, <laughs> let me check my notes. Which is a game for people only of superior intellect, right? Yes. The tagline is unfun for all the family. Right. Here to go. Tell the internet all about halves. So halves was um, <laughs> one of Dean, Dean's little like big ideas, and um, he just we sat next to each other on a flight to a tour, and he and he said, "Listen, I've had I've, you play games. I've had this idea. Can you just let me explain?" And he, so he explained the premise of it, and we very quickly problem solved like the parts that felt a bit like they yeah, they, they might have been an obstacle. It game by the time. It was done. Your, yeah. Your and, gaming experience to made, managed to turn into the actual play. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then we just, like, so we made a prototype that day. We went to W.H. Smith, bought a pack of cards, some stickers, and made a prototype of it. It played, it worked, it was fu It was really fun. Um, and then we've just, we've gone through a few prototypes, and then eventually we found the energy to sort of get it ready for Kickstarter, and now it's here. Like, and, and the rest is history. I mean, it's, in day one, it's done, like, 60%. It's, all, it's almost hey. fully backed, so... Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you. If you if you have backed it, we love you. If you haven't backed it, what the hell are you doing? Like, there's like crack on. You got yeah. It's pain. Is it painfully complicated? Can my nan play it? No, my daughter plays it. She, yeah. My daughter's Hi. seven and she schools me on it. She Hi. wins me like like she beats me all the time. It's 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 really easy. Like after game one, you know how to play it. Yeah. And it's just like it's just a party game. Like it's real simple, but it's really fun and it's quite ruthless. Like you can. You never really know who's winning until someone wins. You yeah. know, like it's yeah. I like that about it. Yeah. So what, Carter Richardson gonna go into the gaming world big style now. You're gonna go for cards, cards. Uh, card We're in it. You say it. <laughs> we're already in it. We're 60% backed after day one. I think you can say that we are in the gaming world in a big way, yeah. 
and we ain't slowing down. We've just got to have another big idea now. <laughs> like, oh, like the punk rock gun- Dungeons and Dragons or something? Or? <laughs> well, you're looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Like, when I have time off, that's what I do. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be good. If I'm the dungeon or the dragon. <laughs> you're the dragon, bro. Like, look, at, I'm, the, I'm, the doom and, I'm the doom and gloom. <laughs> if I, I'm the dungeon master. I ain't playing no characters, you know. I set the traps. Pretty solid empire you got there. So you got the music, yeah. you got the cards, you got the tats. Your t- new tattoo parlor just around the corner from me on Hoxton Street, I believe. Yeah. How's that going? Yeah, it's going good. I mean, I, it was pretty piss poor timing on my part, but then I wasn't. I didn't see a two-year pandemic happening, so I signed the lease in March 2020. So it's not been my best moment, but um, <laughs> but I like a bit of graft. So yeah, I just got stuck in, and we've we've made it work. It's been really really good actually. Um, yeah, it's been it's been just like. It's life's been, good, it's, man. It's good. Life's good. Yeah. The pandemic was just weird for us. We've we've lived our whole adult life on tour. Mm. Take that away. We've made a card game. <laughs> we've opened a tattoo shop. We're surviving prior just like whatever we can do. But like we've both realised since we've been back on tour that like this keeps us steady. Ah, uh, steadier. I think yeah. that's probably more accurate. Yeah. Yeah. But it. I don't know. I don't think. I think we both underestimated how much we, it grounds us touring. So, yeah. I mean, it's quite good. We've got some weird stuff come out of it. I'm not sure we would have made this if it were. I mean, the idea was way pre it, but like to finish it, we just had too much time on our hands, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Frank and Neve from the Rattlesnakes, thank you very much. Don Diesta, La Fiesta, right here. <laughs>